the definitive treatment for this skin really is to do uh, to remove the skin. We do that under local anesthesia that's called an upper blepharoplasty. Sometimes we remove little fat pads as well. Right, so today we are going to treat Neve, and Neve is 48 years old. She's interested in general rejuvenation, facial rejuvenation. She wants to improve her skin, she wants to look a little bit fresher and a little bit younger. So let's take a look here at the high resolution image that we have of Neve. The first thing I notice, and it's quite evident, is that there is a significant amount of pigmentation in the skin. Neve is fair, she's probably type 1 skin, burns easily, never tans. So all of this epidermal pigmentation we can address with uh, resurfacing, whether it's a chemical peel or laser peels. Today we're going to do a laser resurfacing to start the rejuvenation process. Now what else do we notice? Well, we can start from the top. She has a few little fine lines around the eyes here and you know there are a lot of non-surgical treatments that are used for periorbital rejuvenation. Uh, skin treatments would include lasers like laser peeling, radiofrequency needling, microneedling, PRP, sometimes fillers if there's a significant groove or tear trough hollow there. But in this case really you can see here this crepey loose skin and sometimes you get protrusion of orbital fat, little bulging fat pads, particularly in the nasal area here, that doesn't really seem to be that evident in Neve's case. But we do see some loose skin here, and it's falling down close to the eyelashes, and a few little fine lines here. The definitive treatment for this skin really is to do, uh, to remove the skin. We do that under local anesthesia, that's called an upper blepharoplasty. Sometimes we remove little fat pads as well, to um, reduce the, the fullness if there is little bulging fat pads evident. It's also useful to, to, to assess the position of the eyebrow because sometimes the eyebrow is low and if the eyebrow is low this contributes to the loose skin here that gets uh, a little bit droopy we call this dermatochalasis but if the brow is low sometimes it's more appropriate to lift the brow and as a general rule we want the distance from the pupil to the eyebrow to be at least 25 millimeters and we can actually measure the distance here to see how it is so it is a little bit low it's about 20 millimeters so we could, in theory, lift the brow here and improve the skin that appears here under the brow in this area. And there are different ways to lift the brow. We can use botulinum toxin injections, we can use tissue tightening treatments above the brow to tighten the skin here, or we can use a formal uh, surgical brow lift, another thing we do under local anesthesia sometimes. Okay, so what else? Let's look at a different angle here. The facial volume, I think, is diminishing a little bit. She's probably losing a little bit of fat in the face. Well, she definitely is because everybody is over time and that's a normal feature of aging. Here you can see this little curve we call the OG curve. Now we want this ideally to be a smooth, seamless contour or curve so that it makes the shape of the face heart-shaped or oval. Here's the zygomatic bone there and there's a little bit of an indentation here and a little bit of fullness then here. So I think she probably will benefit from a little bit of subtle volume replacement in the deep medial cheek fat compartment. Now you can see here the nasolabial fold. This is a little shadow. And it's tempting to fill this shadow. And we can do that, of course, to, to soften the nasolabial fold because it is somewhat a feature of aging. But almost always it's more appropriate first to address the mid facial volume this fat here, because sometimes when you lose the fat in the mid face, this area called the nasolabial fat pad becomes a bit more obvious because you're losing volume above, which has supportive effect for the mid face. And then the shadow gets a little bit deeper. Is there anything else going on? Well, let's look at the front photo again. Now they're very subtle things here, like for some reason, this shadow here looks a little bit deeper than the right side. And I would argue that she's probably lifting the left side of the lip a little bit higher than the right side here as well. So it's almost like a little bit of a snarl. 
where the muscle called the levator labii superioris aliquinesi, it's a very long name for a very small muscle, tiny little strip of a muscle that comes from here down into the lip and lifts the lip, it's a little bit more active on this side. So that is creating a slight asymmetry here. So it's not always about volume and filling. Here in this case, you could arguably put a tiny little drop of botulinum toxin to relax this, this little muscle. And that would soften the fold on the left nasolabial area and also probably improve the symmetry of the lips. And this is something we see a lot of the times. Patients feel that the lips are asymmetric and they want more filler on one side to try to balance them out. And of course we can do that, but sometimes it's important to look at the dynamics of the mouth as well. So <clears throat> have a look at the muscles that are acting on the mouth or pulling the mouth because there are quite a lot of them around the mouth. Additionally, you'll see the mouth slightly downturns at the corners probably contributed by volume loss and so therefore we can fill this area to lift the corners of the mouth. Definitely I think her lips are thinning so it would be quite nice to put some hyaluronic acid filler in the border of the lips and probably in the body of the lips too. Maybe even a little bit of filler above the lips in these little fine lines and also a little bit of botulinum toxin to the depressor of the corners of the mouth to make the mouth slightly more upturned and less downturned at the corners. Of course, if we do laser resurfacing, which we will do today, it will improve the fine lines around the mouth, the perioral lines. And another thing we can do is little tiny droplets of botulinum toxin to relax this muscle, the orbicularis oris muscle that goes around the mouth. This will slightly evert the upper lip and make it a little bit uh, fuller. Under the eyes, we can treat this area here with the laser resurfacing as well. Here you can see a slight shadow there is a slight shadow, maybe we can look at that from a different angle. There is a slight shadow here, so we are seeing volume loss in the temple area. So after it knee recovers from the laser resurfacing, I think it would be a good idea to address the volume in the temples, probably a little bit in the mid face and maybe even a little bit along the jawline. Okay, so what else can we do for a full facial rejuvenation? There are other things, of course. Now, the distance between the nose and the top lip and the distance from the bottom lip to the chin should be about a ratio of one to two. It looks okay here. Let's measure it. If the upper lip is significantly longer, that's 15 millimeters, roughly, and 32. So this is good. So the proportion here is actually okay. Sometimes if the upper lip lengthens, and it often does, it hides the upper teeth, the upper dentition, and the proportion here approaches one to one, which is an aging feature. And in that case, sometimes we, I can add volume to the chin, but even more rejuvenating is to actually do a surgical lip lift, where we actually lift up the lip and it reduces the distance from the nose to the top lip. A very rejuvenating surgical procedure that, again, we can do under local anesthesia. So the plan is we're gonna do first full face laser resurfacing after doing injections, nerve blocks and topical anesthesia as well. And then we'll see Neve back probably in a couple of weeks and we can address the volume loss that has appeared. We can do lip enhancement and maybe a little bit of botulinum toxin as well. And that will really improve the skin, the canvas of her face and also add a little bit of volume back, which I think would be quite rejuvenating. Well, let's take a closer look at the skin. We already can see on the plain high resolution photography that Neve has pigmentation, brown spots, freckling that she would like to clear and improve so that her skin will look more radiant and clearer. But this is a quantitative skin analysis that goes into a little bit more detail. Here we can see the pigmentation. This is the right side of her face. And with this we can measure the degree of unevenness and pigmentation with a view to resurfacing and then following up with another imaging in a few weeks so we can see the improvement. There's not just pigmentation, there's also redness here and so this is a measure of the hemoglobin or the red in knee of skin and this is caused by dilated capillaries, dilated blood vessels. So if we really want to improve the skin to, the, to really reach its 
highest potential, then we would arguably address all of the so-called chromophores, which are the which is the pigmentation. Now pigmentation can be red, it can be brown, and in this case there's a bit of both. So I think looking with plain photography and with the naked eye, predominantly what we're seeing is brown pigmentation because Neve is fair, her skin is quite fair and uh, burns easily and freckles easily. So I think the most appropriate first treatment is to resurface. The benefit, benefit of using fractional CO2 laser resurfacing is we can peel away the pigmentation, but we can also get a collagen stimulating effect. So we're going to get a tightening effect as well, and that will improve the fine lines. But after that, we can follow that up with uh, vascular laser treatments to address the redness and the blood vessels and improve that. Also, what we want to do with collagen stimulating treatments, initially with CO2, but later we can do radiofrequency needling, like Morpheus 8, for example, is to address texture fine lines, pores, and unevenness. And all of these things can be addressed with skin tightening treatments, essentially stimulating the skin, a controlled injury, so we can heat the skin and tighten it and stimulate collagen to get remodeling of that collagen over time. This is a process that usually takes three to six months, so it's not an instant effect. The pigmentation will clear away quickly, but this textural improvement with lasers, with radiofrequency devices, with all of these treatments will get better and better with added treatments. We use every derm program to stack treatments on top of each other to really get the most powerful, best effect. And what we usually do is combine treatments. So we will do use different energy-based devices in different modalities to target pigmentation, redness, pores, texture, fine lines. And then of course we can add volume appropriately so that the patient always looks natural to smooth away fine lines, to do facial contouring, lip enhancement, chin enhancement, and things like that. And, and botulinum and toxins to relax hyperdynamic lines, usually in the upper face, but sometimes in the lower face as well. We use advanced 3D simulation imaging to take pictures of the face and then simulate treatments so that we can give you some idea of what you might look like after treatments. This is a before and after simulation showing the benefits of resurfacing. Here you can see the pigmentation is cleared, the lip enhancement has made a significant difference with added volume and the lips, the corners of the mouth have been lifted as well and the fine lines have been addressed. You can also see subtle changes like the contour of the cheek or mid-face, the so-called OG curve is now smoother. So the idea here is to just look fresher, to still look like yourself, to look completely natural, look more radiant and look rejuvenated. So this is a one way we can do it to simulate treatments and get some idea of what we're trying to achieve with all of these different treatments. Okay, now we're going to do the laser skin resurfacing.